These are the objectives for today's lesson. We will discuss the three methods to represent sets, define and recognize the empty set, and be able to use these symbols here. Then apply set notation to sets of natural numbers. We tend to place things in categories, which allows us to order and structure the world. For example, to which populations do you belong? Do you categorize yourself as a college student? What about your gender? What about your academic major or your ethnic background? Our minds cannot find order and meaning without creating collections. Mathematicians call such collections sets. A set is a collection of objects whose contents can be clearly determined. The objects in a set are called elements or members of the set. A set must be well-defined, meaning its contents can be clearly determined. Using this criterion, the collection of actors who have won Academy Awards is a set. We can always determine whether or not a particular actor is an element of this collection. By contrast, consider the collection of great actors. Whether or not a person belongs to this collection is a matter of how we interpret the word great. Now in this text, we will only consider collections that form well-defined sets. Again, well-defined meaning we can clearly determine the contents of the set. We can clearly tell whether the particular object belongs to a set or not. Also, the order in which the elements of the set are listed is not important. Meaning, if I list A first followed by B, is the same if I list B first and then A. We use capital letters to name sets. And there are three methods that are commonly used to designate a set. The first is called the word description, or sometimes we call this the descriptive method. A word description can be used to designate or name a set. For instance, we call W, capital W here, to represent the set of the days of the week. So this is the description of the set, the days of the week. Now the second method that we are going to discuss is called the roster method. Now the roster method is the method wherein we list all the members of a set. So this involves listing the elements of the set inside a pair of braces. So for instance here, this set W uh, using the descriptive method or the word description method is the set of the days of the week. Now using roster method, this will be the set containing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, commas are used to separate the elements of the set. So we have this commas here, and we use that to separate the elements of the set. So Monday is separated from Tuesday. So this is one element, another element, and another element, and another element. Again, element is a member of the set. And also, these braces here are used 
to designate that the enclosed elements form a set. Now, I just want you to take note that grouping symbols such as parentheses and the square brackets are not used to represent sets. So the one that we use are just the braces. So now let's look at an example here on representing a set using a description. Write a word description of the set P equal to Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. So using word description, this set P is the set of the first five presidents of the United States. What you would do is just find connections of all these five names here. You would notice that these are the surnames of the first five presidents of the United States. So therefore, we can also call P or we can also write P as the set of the first five presidents of the United States using word description method. Now let's write using a roster method. Suppose C is the set of US coins with a value of less than a dollar. Express this using the roster method. So C are just penny, nickel, dime, quarter, and then half dollar. These are the coins whose values are of less than a dollar. Also take note that when you use the roster method, you use the brackets to enclose your elements, and you also use commas. You don't use semicolon or colon to separate members of the set. The third method for representing a set is with set builder notation. Using this method, the set of the days of the week can be expressed as this. And we read this notation as set W is the set of all elements X such that X is a day of the week. Now, before this vertical line here is a variable x, which represents an element in general. And after the vertical line here is the condition for which x must meet in order to be an element of the set. For example, let's try to convert from a set builder to roster notation. So we're given here set A is the set of all X such that X is a month that begins with the letter M. And this one, we want to express this using the roster method. When you say roster method, that is the method where you would list down all the elements and separate the elements by comma. So using the roster method, we know that there are only two months that begins with letter M. And these are the month of March and May. So therefore, A is equivalent from us at the set of March and May. So the set containing March and May. These are the two months that begins with the letter M. Now let's discuss the empty set. The empty set is also called the null set. And this is the set that contains no elements. And we use these symbols here to denote that the set is empty. So this is just bracket with nothing on it, or this symbol here, like a zero, a circle, and then a, 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 a line here. Okay, so these two symbols here are used to denote empty set. Now I want you to take note that whenever you see this 
bracket with this empty set symbol. This is non-empty set. So this one is not empty. Rather, this one is a set with one element. And the element of the set is an empty set. Now, these are the examples of empty sets. For instance, we have the set of all numbers less than and greater than 10. This one is empty because there is no number that is less than 4 and at the same time greater than 10. And also another example is this set here, x, such that x is a font that speaks. So we know that there's no font that speaks. Now as an example, let's look at the following sets. Okay, so which of the following here is an empty set? A or B? Now first, this is a set because it has bracket and there's a content here which is zero. So this one is a set with one element and the element is a zero. So therefore, this is not empty. This set here contains one element. And this one is actually not a set. This is just a number and not a set. It is not enclosed by brackets. So this one is not a set. So now let's consider the following sets. Which of the following sets is the empty set? Let's look at this set here, x such that x is a number less than 4 or greater than 10. Take note, this is or. This is not the same as the previous example. So is this empty? No, because this set here contains all numbers that are either less than 4, such as 3, or greater than 10, such as 11. So this set here is not empty. This has elements. Now what about this set here? X such that X is a square with three sides. Do you think there is a square with three sides? Are there elements for this set here? No because we know that a square is defined to be a closed plane figure with four sides. So if it does not have four sides, then it is not a square. So yes, this is an empty set. Now we will learn two very important notations in set theory. So this symbol here and this symbol here, the E, and the E with a slanted line. Now this symbol E here is used to indicate that an object is an element of a set. And this symbol is used to replace the words is an element of. While this symbol here is used to indicate that an object is not an element of a set. And we could also use this symbol to replace the words is not an element of. Again, this is used to represent element and this one is not an element. Consider the following examples. Determine whether each statement is true or false. Let's consider statement letter A. R, and this symbol here indicates that element R, is an element of this set here. Now, take note we have these three dotted lines here. That means this is the set of all letters A, B, C, D, and so on. So these symbols here is used to indicate and so on. Again, so this is used to indicate and so on. 
meaning to say that for this set here, here we are referring to all lowercase letters in the alphabet so is r on that set yes r is on that set because r is a lowercase letter in the alphabet so that is true next seven is not an element of this set here because this set here is only from one up to five so therefore seven is not an element of this set here you can't find seven here we are listing down all the numbers and it ends up to five but if i place these three dotted lines here that means i have one two three four five and so on but since i could not find those three dots on this set here that means that the set ends at five so I only have five elements for this set here, and seven is not one of those elements. So therefore, this statement here is true. Seven is not a member of this set here. Now next, is the set A an element of this set A, B? Now take note that this one is a set containing A. So this means a set containing A. Well, this set here is a set containing A and containing B. So do you see this whole expression inside this set here? No. So therefore, this is not true this set here is not a member because this one is saying it's a member meaning you can find this whole expression inside this okay inside the brackets but you can't actually find you can find a but you cannot find a bracket containing a like a set containing a so this one is false this set is a set and the set containing A is not an element of the set containing A and B. Now let's discuss the set of natural numbers. So the set of natural numbers is denoted by N here, and these are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Now the three dots here, or the ellipsis, after this number five indicate that there is no final element and that the list goes on forever we also sometimes call this the counting numbers okay so you remember the set of natural numbers as the counting numbers because when you count you always start with one so one two three four five so these are the numbers you use in counting and the number goes on forever so again natural numbers or counting numbers now let us express each of the following sets using roster method so we have set a here to be the set of all natural numbers less than five again roster method means you have to list down all the elements let us list down all the elements for A. A is, and then we have the bracket sign here, and then list down all the natural numbers less than five, and these are the numbers, one, two, three, four. Next, for letter B, the set of all natural numbers greater than or equal to 25. When you say greater than or equal to 25, that means you start at number 25 and then you move on, okay? And then you list down all the counting numbers. So B, starting from 25 and then 26 and then 27 and then 28 and so on. Again, these three dots here or the ellipsis, these are used to denote that, that the numbers would continue forever. And then for letter C, 
E is the setable X such that X is in N, meaning an element of the natural numbers, and X is even. So we're looking for the set of all even numbers in the natural numbers. So even, meaning divisible by 2. So that would start with, so E would be the set of all numbers starting from 2. And then 4, 6, 8, and so on. 